Hey guys, welcome to another episode here on the Jason Saunders channel, also known as the Jason Saunders Show. And uh, today is a special event. We've got episode number 40 going on, happening on this glorious morning or afternoon or, or nighttime in the middle of the night, whatever, you know, whenever you watch this video, you know, uh, is when you'll be watching it. It kind of makes sense, right? I know. I, I'm, I'm a smart guy. I'm a smart cookie. I'm like, you know, cookie monster and eating the cookies and all that stuff. Anyway, guys, there's some good stuff. Video game goodness, happiness, and stupendous times ahead of us. So, get ready. It's like that movie Armageddon with like Bruce Willis and that, that woman and Aerosmith because he did the music for, for some of the tracks on that movie, you know, when the asteroid's coming down, smashing, about to smash Earth. It's going to be, it's going to be a rocking good time. That's right. I was kind of you know, going through my mind how I was going to, you know, mix the asteroid into this video, but, but rocking good time because, you know, the asteroid's a big rock. And, uh, yeah, I think that worked pretty well. All right, let's do this. We've got Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, this is the original Black Box Edition. Uh, this is a good game. And, and uh, Final Fantasy VII was such an amazing game, and it set a new par... A new, you know, RPG bar, and it set it up high, you know? It was like, this is what RPGs are all about. All about stories and, and crazy anime battles and, and, and crazy hair with lots of mousse and, and, and hair products to make your hair not be able to move for any sort of action that you do. So there's that. But with Final Fantasy VIII, we had more realistic characters, and uh, the cinematics were amazing, and the music is oh so nice. That's right. Oh. And uh, Squaresoft, before they came the Square Enix. So Squaresoft did some really nice stuff back in the day, back in our time, when we were little guys, or, or little... Little gals, whatever, you know. It's a good one. And here we go, we've got... Um, if you like Blade Runner, you know that movie with Harrison Ford, or Blade Runner 2049, or whatever the heck it is. I, I probably messed up on that date. I, I forget what the title is. Well, it's the second movie for the Blade Runner movies. Uh, you like some Fear Effect. This game is awesome. It's, it's classic. Um... And it's like, how can I compare it? It's like uh, Resident Evil meets Blade Runner, pretty much. Uh, you've got some amazing cell shaded graphics. I mean, if you pop this sucker in today, you're, you're going to be uh, in awe with the graphics. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going around in the backgrounds. There's like smoke and uh, lots of like working gears and all sorts of futuristic uh, crazy floodlights going around and cars flying around. And it, and it's also kind of like Fifth Element, if you like that Fifth Element movie with Bruce Willis and Mila Jovovich. Uh, yeah, you'll like this this as well. Some really cool stuff. Cool action game. Uh, it's a mature game, so it's, it's not for the little guys, even though I think I was a little guy when I was playing this. Well, a teenager, yeah. And uh, it's a goodie. And then we've got some Suicoden, Su Suicoden, Su Sui, yeah, Sui Gooey, on the Sui Gooey, Coden. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm just being silly at the moment. All right, so we've got, uh, yeah, the original one, where it all started, where it was all happening. Sui Coden is uh, a really rich RPG series. Uh, some of the games are better than others, but uh, I, f I think these games definitely set the par, uh, bar pretty high for, like, uh, character development, and you've got, a, like, this crazy amount of characters, and you get a sense of, like, what each character does, 
and pretty full detail. Like there's, you know, there's the good guys and the bad guys and like the, the ones that are kind of in the, the middle. And uh, the story is always rich on these Sui Koden games. It's, they're really good games. I highly suggest if you see any of these around, pick them up because, uh, yeah, th there were some on the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Uh, there was a Japanese only uh, PSP game that came out, and there was one for uh, the DS, uh, Sui Code and Tear Chris. Those are all really good games, really good RPG games. And uh, yeah, definitely, uh, this is uh, an awesome game. Uh, part 2 is better. Well, some may argue about, about that. But uh, yeah, this one's, it's, it's an awesome time. Shake, something's shaking in there. It's, it's a CD. It's going crazy in there. All right. We got Alien Trilogy, the complete Alien Trilogy in one Black Death, White Knuckle Nightmare. Sounds like a lot of fun right there. And uh, you got the alien going, <sighs> he's probably checking his breath. He's got a breath mint. You know, he's about, you know, he's just going to check, <sighs> checking it out, checking out the breath. He's going out on a date. He's got a hot date and probably with the queen or something like that. And they're, uh, <laughs> they're getting together. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Yeah, this game, if you like Doom or Quake or Wolfenstein or any sort of like first person shooter or like uh, Rise of the Triad, any of the like old school first person shooter stuff, uh, you'll like uh, some Alien Trilogy. I mean, this game is, is really top notch. Uh, really good 2D uh, enemy sprites and stuff like that. And it, yeah, those face huggers are, are after you too. So, you, you know, you're going around a corridor and you got one of those suckers going like, uh, sucking, sucking on your face. Like, like you do on some dates sometimes, you know, some, some, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Star Wars Dark Forces, custom PlayStation edition. Uh, this game, again, is the same sort of uh, goodness that Alien Trilogy has. It's a nice uh, first-person shooter game. We're blasting stormtroopers in first-person mode, and uh, that's always a lot of fun. Good game, great sound, uh, great music, all-around good stuff. And then we've got Chrono Cross. Is there something moving in there? Uh, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, Chrono Cross, uh, this uh, recently came out on the Switch, which is kind of cool because that's uh, it's coming out on cartridge. Uh, that's that's very neat. There's a lot of, like, uh, yeah, they had Final Fantasy VII out on the, uh, back on the Nintendo system. Kind of insane when you think about it, you know. Um, yeah, this game is amazing. Uh, fantastic graphics. Uh, the music is, is some of the best music around uh, uh, for video games. Just really nice. And what it reminds me of is that, uh, was it? Oh, goodness, Xeno, Xenoblade Saga? Yeah, kind of reminds me of a lot of that music. And I, I don't know if it's the same composer, but it, it definitely reminds me of that same sort of like, uh, that type, you know, very instrumental and lots of like flutes and all that stuff. I don't know. Is it flutes? I don't know what they're playing on that. <laughs> is it pan flutes? I don't know. I'm a musical expert. I know exactly what they're playing. I, I have no idea. It's like it's it's beautiful sounding to my ears, though. That's the important part. So we've got King of Fighters '99. I mean, I am a big fan of the King of Fighters, and I like the new stuff. Um, I kind of wish they would go back to uh, the, the 2D art style, and they did back, I think they did a PlayStation 3 game with that, you know, the same kind of 2D art style, and I really, that was probably my favorite newest King of Fighter game. Uh, th but these are classic. I mean, the characters are nice, uh, and it brings something new to the, to the table, uh, you know, uh, with like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Sometimes it's hard for fighting games to try out something new, but uh, these guys did it. They did it. And uh, great stuff. Great fighters, great moves. Backgrounds are awesome. It's very intriguing. Yes. And then we've got a not-so-great game. Well, it's okay. I, I don't mind it. 
I don't mind it personally, but uh, I don't think anyone's going to be like, this is on my the top list of the fighting games, I'm, like, ever, you know. But uh, we got Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. And when you start this guy up, uh, the announcer is awesome. It's, it's like, uh, I don't know, Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. Yeah, something like that. I think I think I did a better job personally. You'd have to check it out, but it's like, you remember the bouncer on the PlayStation 2? They had this cool announcer guy doing the voice and the bouncer. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I always got a kick when I started that game out. You know, <laughs> it's like dramatic voice narration going on there. This game is cool. I I really like this. is an interesting game. It's Street Fighter the movie. Okay, the game. I know, it's like, you gotta get your head around that. It's it's the video game based on the Street Fighter movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. I mean, you gotta check this out. It's uh, it's digitized characters, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's it works great, plays awesome. Uh, yeah, it's like Street Fighter 2, they got all the moves, all the signature moves. Uh, it's almost more like Street Fighter Alpha, because they've got all those, uh, they have those moves from that game. But yeah, this this is a really cool game. I highly suggest this one actually. If you're a fan of Mortal Kombat, especially the uh, the older stuff with the digitized characters, yeah, this one's awesome. Really good time. And then I got this one at the pound store. I got I think I paid like fifty cents for this a couple of years back. And this game is one. Of, it's expensive. I, didn't, I had no idea. I just uh, kind of looked at the price of it. I was kind of curious. I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's a couple of dollars. But I, I think this is like a hundred over a hundred bucks, medieval. So uh, yeah, I did pretty good on that. It was probably like three years ago, and uh, yeah, the pound store. It's crazy. You got all these bins that you go through stuff, and then they bring in more stuff. They 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 take those bins. They go out back, and then they bring more bins of, of like stuff. And there's like toys. I found a lot of like '80s. Ninja Turtle toys and all sorts of cool stuff. Transformers, like brand new stuff to, and you pay next to nothing for this stuff. It's it's amazing. And then we got Final Fantasy VII. Pretty classic stuff here. We got the uh, Greatest Hits uh, edition here. Not too bad. Of course, not too bad. It's like one of the best games ever for Final Fan uh, for Final Fantasy for RPGs, really. Um, Pro 18 World Tour Golf. Um, I'm a fan of golf games. I admit it. I'm admitting this, guys. I yeah, I have a soft spot for golf games. If somebody has, if somebody's playing a golf game or <laughs> or I see a golf game, uh, I might I'll probably end up picking it up because I I just I don't know. I'm just fascinated with it's just uh, it makes it makes a really good video game to me. I don't know. It's a good time. And it and it's great when you do like you you flop your shots and you end up in a tree or something and you know it's like this big ass tree and you can't get around you're trying to shoot the ball but you can't get around it and then you end up in a bush, you know you got thorns up the butt you know a thorn bush or something like that and you know, or you go in a a sand trap all that good stuff. Resident Evil Three Nemesis, this is pretty classic. I remember uh, looking at Game Pro magazines. Looking at this and just being amazed at the screenshots, you know, before the internet really took off. And, uh, yeah, uh, the graphics are still nice. Um, you know, I mean, they did the remake of this. It looks amazing. But, I mean, this this game still looks good. You know, I'm not, you know, you play it and you're not like, these graphics suck. No, the graphics are still nice, you know. Here's one that needs to be remade. Uh, Dino Crisis from Capcom, and I've been checking some information. I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure that the air, but I think there's been a lot of fan games and uh, doing like videos of of, of this uh, game, like doing like uh, gameplay and stuff like that. It looks pretty amazing. Uh, it's like, come on, Capcom, <laughs> make this one, please. You know, it's like Jurassic Park slash. Goodness, we're doing the slash. I, I do it every video. I don't mean to do it, guys, but I, I gotta do the slash. We said the slash. We gotta do it again. hi -ya! That's right. One more for good measure here. hi -ya! All right. Slash time. Uh, 
amazing game. Amazing. Uh, good graphics, Resident Evil goodness. Uh, dinosaurs that will scare you around every corner. And here we go. Here's another good one. Tactical espionage action. Satisfaction guaranteed. Metal Gear Solid. And it's got that cool little uh, foily, shiny uh, thing going on with the, the title here. Pretty cool. I, I have a love and hate relationship to the Metal Gear games. I think it's more love than hate. Um, because cinematic games kind of started when this one came out. And I, I love some cinematics, but you, you know, you got to have some gameplay. And this, this had it too. But when this came out, it was, it was amazing. I do admit that. Uh, and it was, you know, very realistic, uh, movie like video game, you know, full on, uh, voice acting, very impressive voice acting. And, you know, you got a lot of like the original Resident Evil, uh, known for the cheesy voice acting, but, uh, you know, and that, that's awesome on its own, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wish they were still making these games, you know, despite, uh, the heavy, you know, full on story and stuff like that, but I, I do miss them a lot. And, uh, it made a huge impact on video games and, uh, it was an amazing time. Parasite Eve, Squaresoft, had the uh, playable demo uh, for, uh, for Xeno Gears, and we got Bushido Blade 2, Brave Fencer, Musashi, and also uh, Final Fantasy VIII. And I, I, again, I missed these here, having like the demos for stuff, you know. Uh, that was pretty neat, too. And uh, some of the gaming magazines back in the day had free demos that came with the magazine. So that was another cool thing from back in my time. God, I sound old. <laughs> but this game is amazing. Uh, there, there was a new game for the PSP, which was pretty cool. And uh, they did some amazing... They pulled off some amazing stuff for the play, uh, the PlayStation Portable for that game. Yeah, it was like uh, Parasite Eve, the third birthday or something like that. Really cool. And then we've got uh, Final Fantasy uh, IX. Very cool. Nice, uh, you know, and again, another nice Final Fantasy game. Very cool. And then the last game that I have here is The Legend of Dragoon. Again, another classic. Uh, this is the uh, Greatest Hits. Again, Greatest Hits. Ah! Yeah, some really good stuff. Nice classic. I mean, the original PlayStation is such a classic system. And, uh, I didn't own it originally as a kid, uh, but my friend had it, and I was amazed at some of the games and stuff like that, especially those Final Fantasy games when they're summoning, like, uh, those crazy monsters, you know? And I was just like, oh my god, this is so cool. I think especially when uh, my friend had uh, Final Fantasy VIII playing, and, and yeah, and what was it, the Ice God Shiva or something like that? I can't think of, I think that was the name of, of the, the god or whatever, the... The thing that you summon. <laughs> yeah, it was this crazy thing, you know. Special effects and all sorts of cool stuff going on there. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoy my uh, PlayStation 1 original collection. Uh, tune in for more stuff on the Jason Saunders channel. Thank you all my subscribers. Thank you all my listeners and newcomers to the channel. Uh, if you like my content, be sure to... Ring the bell, the church bell, the dinner bell. Yeah, lunch is coming, guys. You guys are hungry, you need some food. Ring that bell, ding the bell. Ding-a-ling the bell. <laughs>